To any newlyweds out there looking to travel the globe for a six month honeymoon on a shoestring budget, it's not easy. Around the world ticket alone is pricey. Then you gotta factor in food, lodging, entertainment, travel within each country, visas, vaccinations, phrase books, etc, etc. There are some organizations that can ease the burden of at least some of those travel expenses. Couchsurfing and Help Exchange are two great resources for tourists on a budget looking for a different way to travel. But the organization that we decided to volunteer with is called WOOF, Worldwide Opportunities on Organic Farms. How it works is you pay a small membership fee, and for about five or six hours of help each day, your hosts give you room and board and a bit of cultural exchange. In the U.S., you say, smile and say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> yes. cheese, cheese, cheese. And hopefully a couple of days off during the week to sightsee. And it all started with this lady, Sue Coppard. I, I thought up the whole idea as a way of getting to stay in the countryside in the days when I was living in London. As I didn't have any contacts in the country, I thought, how can I get to stay on a farm? And I thought, if I worked for them, I wonder if they'd let me stay with them. And then I thought, well, doing this on my own might be a bit lonely. I wonder if other people would like to do the same thing. And I thought up a kind of exchange system. I hastily put an advertisement in the London magazine and um, 15 people replied. Though the farm managers were skeptical at first, they came to realize what hard workers a few dedicated city slickers could be. They were quite surprised, I think, that we'd achieved quite a lot. And they said, hmm, you've done quite well. Um, maybe you'd like to fix another weekend. <laughs> and that was how it all started. But before we left Japan, we dropped in on one of Kazoo's English classes at Asia University in Tokyo. Did I talk about the hoof last week? Yes? Or not? Guys, so quiet. <laughs> they very shy. Typical Japanese. Maybe they're embarrassed. Oh, they embarrassed. I uh, get embarrassed too. You? You can stay in Australia or Canada, America. You understand? For free. You just do uh, plane ticket. Plane ticket mm -hmm. and get there, you know. When you go to each site, we got to be guest lecturers at a Japanese university. Usually you have to be able to speak the language to do that. It's a good way to learn the culture. They smell the work and uh, they, <laughs> they go away. <laughs> we did our best to help out, but two novice farmhands don't put much of a dent in the workload. That's okay, though, because the largest task is something even a rookie can handle. Weeding. Although even that turned out to be tougher feet than you might imagine. C'est pas facile du tout, parce qu'on s'oblige à ne pas utiliser euh, en particulier les désherbants. Et on est en face d'un problème d'herbe très très important, très régulièrement. Comme il n'y a plus tout l'été, Uh, impossible de, de désherber. Les graines, les mauvaises herbes uh, vont à graines. Et un pied qui graine, ben, vous avez 2, 3, 4, 5 000 graines pour les années qui suivent. Donc vous vous imaginez uh, le drame que c'est de laisser aller à graines une plante, une adventice. Luke's land is a bit of a mess and it's harder to work on whenever there's heavy rain. In the meantime, the weeds keep growing. Et donc on est totalement débordé de travail. Et c'est très embêtant, on a commencé et puis je ne sais pas quand on va pouvoir s'y remettre. Mais ça veut dire que si on ne peut pas s'y remettre, ben, il n'y aura pas de plan de poireau. On est en face de, de situations où il faudrait euh, énormément de personnes. Là, il faudrait qu'on soit euh, 20, 30 euh, pendant deux semaines pour arriver à, à remettre le jardin à niveau au niveau du, du désherbage. Ce qui est totalement impossible. On est en face d'un de...
lâchez votre main. We were curious about how many wolf hosts there are near Corvallis. Turns out there's no shortage. Throw a big enough squash at the town's farmer's market and you're bound to hit one of them. Like Andrea, owner of Kings Valley Gardens. She and her partner John produce jams from the many berries and other fruits they grow at the farm. I make apple butter and pear butter and pear ginger spread and blackberry spread and raspberry spread and all those things at the farmer's market with the help of woofers. <laughs> We're just taking the blueberry netting down for the winter. Farming is hard, you know, it's not an easy thing to do. And it's definitely was a struggle, especially at first. It felt more like, how can I actually farm and make a living here? And woofing was a way that we could get enough help that we could actually try to make that happen. And I haven't seen her without woofers, I don't think. Every time I go to the farmer's market, there's someone new with her helping out at the booth. I feel like part of the reason why I'm doing it is to teach and to pass on some skills. So when people care about those skills, it's like they really want to be doing these things. They want to learn how to do things. They want to continue doing some of them after they leave. Um, I mean, I feel like that's part of why we're farming is to share that kind of knowledge with other people.